Last week I was talking to a friend of mine. That's what uh, friends do sometimes, right? And he told me... Oh! An anvil! Indeed, it's an anvil. And it's heavy. That's nice. It's very heavy. I would like to have one, but uh, it's heavy. But uh, a small one, like uh, Julius anvil. Oh, that's not heavy. Uh, maybe I can fix you something. Can you? I have a piece of train rail. Maybe I can make you something out of this. That would be perfect. All right, deal, deal. Here you go. So, uh, thanks for watching. Wait, maybe we can do something better with this. Slowly but surely I start to see where we are going with this thing. Of course, as always, I don't have any plans for it. It's uh, the piece of metal that decides. I think a good anvil needs a flat machined surface. Of course, not flat like a surface plate, but just clean and flat surface. And the horn needs to be round. And I think the ideal machine to do this is, of course, the shaper. But there is a problem. Shaper too small. And I also think this steel is too hard. It's very nice hard steel to make anvils, but it's not very nice to machine. So my high speed steel, I don't think it's gonna work. So this thing is going to do a little tour in the milling machine. And because this is hard stuff and I don't want to mess up the spindle bearings more than they already are, I'm going to use this one in horizontal mode. So before I can do this surface I need something straight and square that this one doesn't. My idea is to first install it like this on a pair of parallels and then I can make this surface clean and square. After this, spin it like this and then I can work the bottom surface, turn it up, and then I can work this surface. If, uh, if it works. I installed this cutter because it uses these very cheap inserts. Of course I could also install my very expensive carbide but I think this is gonna mess up my carbide cutters. Maybe not, maybe it will, but this, we'll see if it works. Slow down a bit.
And that's the reason why I wanted to use this tool. While cutting, I hear this little click. And indeed, it broke the cutting tip. Two more to go, that's good. Okay, back on track. I suppose that this side was the inside of the trail rack. As you can see, it is not centered, so I suppose the tapered side of the train wheels was more beating here than it is here. And also, for I don't know what reason, this thing was not parallel. This side was much higher than this side. But that's okay. Now, to make this look a little bit better, I will give it a touch of angle grinder when it's finished. But first, I will cut this point here, and combined angle will be more or less 45 degrees. All the milling work is now finished and all this and I broke only two times a little cutting tip of my tool here so I think that's a good result oh and by the way I also gave a little bit of cut in my parallel here but that's not a problem right I think now I should make here a cut out to make it more you know point shape angle grinder I gave the thing a little coat of paint and also drilled four holes in the foot here because I would like to give this thing also to my friend and these four holes of course correspond with these four slots in here well I suppose they, they do I think this is a very nice and flat surface the only thing I have to do is to cut off 
this part that I don't need and then clean it up a bit of course because he likes to work for example with leather and I don't want his work pieces to become nasty because of so angle grinder again To cut off what's left of this useless part here, I would like to do it in the shaper. But just like before, same problem, shaper, too small, not enough, stroke length. I really need a bigger shaper. Maybe I should ask Karen and Curtis in Australia, they have a bigger one and they don't use it. So again, milling machine. Now, of course, I don't have a problem with this. Uh, I like the milling machine too, of course. I tamped down the part using the mounting slots in this thing here. I suppose they're meant for it, so I can as well use them. Same cutting tool, and uh, let's go for it. I'm wearing the mask because the thing is cast iron and while cutting it's making a lot of dust. Maybe I'm gonna try put some oil on it to see if it goes better. doesn't change much. The only difference is now that it's also smoking. So. And here's the finished product. And I'm quite happy with the result. In my opinion, it looks a bit like a small anvil. Now, the paintwork, first I painted it black and then sandpapered it all off again and then gave it a little coat of transparent varnish. And that gives it, the, I think, a very nice look to it. Now, of course, it's a little bit pointless to spend all this time because I'm pretty sure he's gonna beat the shit out of this thing. But at least the day I will give it to him, it will look good. And the reason why I made this base is, of course, if he needs a little bit more weight to it. And also it will make it easier to clamp it down with uh, made in Germany clamps, for example. And of course it's very easy to take it apart and now he's got a very nice and flat surface to cut things or for example use a little bit of masking tape and then glue a piece of sandpaper on it and he's got a nice flat surface to sand things down so of course i will give him this anvil the more or less surface plate and four little bolts to bolt it together if he wants to. And I also think if you make something for a friend, don't forget the lady. I think it's not fair. The man receives something and the lady nothing. So for her, I made a pencil. <laughs>